Got some crazy babies that hatched that I was super excited. This was actually a pewter bee lesser bongo. So it's a pastel, it's a cinnamon, it's a spider, it's a lesser, and it's a bongo, and it's bred to a pinstripe. So we got all kinds of cool animals in here. We got some normally stuff too. I mean, we have just like a little lesser and a little pewter that is a pastel and a cinnamon right here, nothing too big. Got a little spider ball python here. Again, a single gene animal, which is gonna happen. And of course, we have a little bumblebee ball python too, which is the pastel and the spider. Still one of my favorite mutations. Been around forever, but it's really cool. But then we start getting into some crazy stuff. This is actually a pewter lesser bongo ball python. Just look at the color on that animal right there. I tell you what, that thing is an absolute ripper. Love the way the bongo and lesser works together. Add that cinnamon in there, then you add the pastel. Oh my gosh, this thing is absolutely incredible. Now there's actually a little bit of a bummer here. This animal here is also a pewter lesser bongo as well, but you can see its left eye actually has got some issue with it, right? Now it hatched out this way, it didn't get injured or anything like that. And it looks like the eye is full of pus, which tells me that somehow during incubation, there was like something that infected the actual eye itself. Not sure what's gonna happen well, after it sheds. Hopefully, maybe it corrects itself, but there's a chance that this snake could go blind, to be totally honest with you. It could lose its left eye. Not a whole lot we can do about it yet. We just have to wait to see if it sheds. After it sheds, then we can actually assess what we can do and if there's anything we can do about it. But that's unfortunate, for sure, because that's absolutely a beautiful snake. And nevertheless, it's gonna be good no matter what. Even if it loses its eye, it's gonna be fine. But it is it is definitely a bummer to have an animal that beautiful have an issue like that, that's for sure. Then we actually have a couple pewter bongos that don't have the lesser in them, so they're a little bit different color, but that bongo gene, Ooh, doggy, I tell you what, I love it. And I think these things turned out so absolutely incredible. And then finally, we actually produced, this thing is cool. This is actually a pewter lesser bongo pinstripe. This is an absolutely beautiful ripping snake. I am so happy that we produced this one. So again, some really cool results for this breeding. It was definitely really a beautiful clutch for sure. Bummer about that one snake, but we'll keep you updated and I'm sure it's gonna be fine either way, but I promise to keep you updated and we'll do the best we can do to get that animal healthy. And of course, there's a good chance that that animal may lose its eye. I'm not really sure. Until it sheds out, we'll have to reassess it. But we all know that, you know, Helen was born without eyes at all. She didn't even have any eyes when she was born, and she's done absolutely incredible. I mean, look at how good she's doing. She's such a sweetheart. So just because that one may go blind in the one side doesn't mean it's going to be a bad animal. I'm sure it's going to thrive and stuff like that. And what we typically do when we have that is we'll just rehome an animal like that to someone that wants it as a pet, just in case it is something inherent, which we don't know if it's inherent or not. Most likely, it's some kind of bacterial infection that happened while it was incubating to be totally honest with you but nevertheless we won't want to breed that animal just in case because we don't want to spread on some kind of genetic abnormality that could potentially be a problem right but nevertheless what we'll do is we'll let it shed we'll get it feeding once it's really established we'll go ahead and rehome it to somebody that absolutely loves it and that's just the way it is oh and by the way welcome to the vlog reptile army i hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible you know we have some new gear that has just come out it's pretty cool it's like eight or ten new designs we're going to drop some more in about a month so definitely always go to reptilearmy.com keep an eye on it because we're always dropping new stuff i'm super excited about the future so if you don't mind join the army join the movement get out there be our little foot soldiers showing people how incredible reptiles actually are go to reptile.com again 10 percent proceeds go to us arc the rest go to education reptilearmy.com oh and by the way we're actually going to do a little road trip right now and get out of here and go visit an aquarium you ready yeah you ready to uh go see sea life aquarium i've never been there before never been there no. I'm excited. All right, we're gonna go get Lauren. We're gonna head to Sea Life Aquarium. Again, we're on the prowl to go visit as many aquariums as we can so we can learn as much as we can. Let's hit the road. Yeah, get your vlog camera out. Your favorite animal. It's a giraffe. It's a I love giraffe. the giraffe. We gotta have a giant giraffe in front of our oh, place. That's your favorite. I know, you I love it. it. It's got a little scuba I thing on there, snorkel. It's awesome, I love it. This is gonna be so much fun. You excited? Yes, I am. It's gonna be good. Look at this is like we should be on that poster. Look at that nose. I know that's cool. It's a Pinocchio fish. Lori, right, what are you doing in the aquarium? Lori, <laughs> right, get out of the aquarium. It's <laughs> they got their feet. Really, my brain is just going on high mode here, you know, really thinking about all the things. One of the things I found interesting is that the tanks aren't like huge, right? I thought they'd be much bigger. I'm sure there's some big tanks here, but it's pretty cool. Take a look at this right here, and it's just like 
this high. It's just, you know, again, give me tons of ideas. Look at the tank over there that we'll go take a look at right now. It's cool. It's got like schooling fish, which I think are really cool. We definitely want to do that. But the tank is only this high. It's just, it's kind of neat. You know, lots of ideas going on. This place is cool and uh, again, really has my brain thinking. All right, it's your puffer fish. I know. Are the starfish? Yeah, you can touch the sea star. Is, so cool. um, is it cold? Yeah, anything in here. Oh no, they're like sticky. <laughs> Do they bite? No, but it's no, they're not gonna they, bite. But they, they like hold on. They're like sticky. they hold on. Yeah. Oh, look at it! Took its hand back. <laughs> if it likes you, it'll grab you. Like that. <laughs> Whoa! It's so <laughs> cute. What the heck? Now this is the cool room. I got it. Look at this. This aquarium goes all the way around. All the way around. That is absolutely incredible. I love this room for sure. Wow. Oh, 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 oh no. Give me that clam back. <laughs> it's cool to see a ray tank. Uh, again, very different than my concept, but at the same time, it's super cool just to see the fish that can go in with them. There's some sharks in here. Uh, obviously, a little different if people are swimming in it, right? But uh, like I said, just about an hour trip to the aquarium to see some ideas and start to get that mind going. But, uh, I love it. I'm super excited. I can't imagine that one day we may have a place similar to this. What did you guys think? I thought it was awesome. Yeah, I, I actually cool. liked it a lot. Did you get some good ideas? Yeah, we gotta get a Pinocchio fish. Pinocchio fish is a must. Pinocchio fish is a must, yeah. Um, what else? What do you think? Uh, no, you saw a lot of cool fish, a lot of cool ideas yeah. for things yeah. to maybe implement. Yeah, just a lot of different ideas. What are those like meerkat little holes you go into? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like the little tube and stuff. Like that. That's really cool, so, so it's all awesome. good. Yeah. So, yeah. so many ideas. Uh, we'll definitely have some cover fish. It's in the set. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It's in the set. You gotta build a nice environment. Oh yeah. Gotta make Obvious. the environment good. Yep. <laughs> Lots to think about guys. Let's head back to the shop. Obviously just back from the aquarium and I tell you what, I mean obviously the only fish we have are our gear and of course Jonah that's over in Bowser's enclosure. And I'm sorry that I'm showing you guys a bunch of fish content but I'm excited about the expansion. Every single day we are working on the expansion, we're working on doing it and I'm really obsessed about it. I'm always going to be a reptile guy, don't get me wrong, but the fish really do excite me and the things that we can bring new experiences excite me as well. Like I said, we actually have the new drawings for the new iteration that actually goes into the parking lot, changes everything around. Still got to tweak some things a little bit more, maybe one more shot at some drawings and then we're going to get into the structural part and again a lot of people ask like how are you going to have an aquarium on the upstairs you know you can have anything you want if you have the right structure and the right foundation you can have a swimming pool up there if you wanted to right so the point is is we have a long way to go but we are making strides and i am going to be visiting a bunch of aquariums over the next couple months and i tell you what this one was absolutely a blast nova obviously is a great animal and i gotta be totally honest with you i'm a little disappointed because the last two years we've had eggs from lilith and nova and this year it doesn't seem like we're going to get any eggs. I'm still holding out hope, but Lilith is just up there. She looks like she's bloated up, but she hasn't laid eggs this year. It's so weird. Now, these guys, of course, have these beautiful frills. That's why they call them frill dragons. They're actually native to Indonesia, New Guinea, and there's even some in Australia, different species, of course, but nevertheless, they're amazing animals. And so many people liken these kind of frillies to that Jurassic Park dinosaur, right? Those are called Dilophosauruses. And of course, they were actually kind of modeled off of frill dragons, to be honest with you. Number one, they didn't spit venom in the water. Wild. They probably didn't even look a lot like a frilled dragon, to be totally honest with you. They actually use frilled dragons as kind of their influence of what that Dilophosaurus would actually look like, which is pretty cool. But I tell you what, they're really amazing. I will say one thing though, sometimes baby frilled dragons come into the country that are farmed from Indonesia. They oftentimes don't do that well, to be totally honest with you. So if you can get a captive born in the USA animal, you may pay a little bit more money for it, but trust me, when you get them, they turn this tame. I mean, they are absolutely amazing. And of course, we have a few that are coming up. Obviously, we've got Big Mac and Chicken Nugget. We've got another one over at BHB. So we'll have a new group that'll be ready to breed maybe next year. Maybe Lilith is just getting old and she doesn't want to produce eggs. I know I'm pretty bummed out because hatching little baby frillies was the highlight of the last two years for me for sure. So nevertheless, I love Nova. And you can literally have an animal like this if you get a captive bred one and just work with them. I mean, they're absolutely ridiculous. Baby colubrid time. I tell you what, I love it. And these are actually a bunch of coral snow corn snakes. So basically what they are is snow corn snakes, which 
which is an albino, which is recessive, an aneurysmic is recessive. Of course, the albino is lacking black, the black is lacking red. So you end up with a snow corn snake. But these aren't just normal snow corn snakes. These are actually coral snow corn snakes. And I'll give you an idea. This is the mama right here, and she's actually due to lay a second clutch any day now. But look at the difference of the color of these guys. That's right. As they get older, they get this pink color that's absolutely incredible. Again, polygenically bred for pink. So every generation we breed them, we try to produce the pinkest ones and then breed them back to unrelated pink animals and get better and better each generation. That's what all of these guys are. So these are going to be absolute rippers when these are about a year old. All that pink's going to come in. And this is, again, another generation of polygenically bred. So these should be even pinker than the mama. So Mike has a little surprise for me. He said this snake is, what, peculiar? It's yeah, a little it's a weird. Little, it's a little uh, quirky. I'll, I don't even know what to expect. I don't even know what's inside of this cage. I haven't seen this cage ever. Am I gonna know? Am, am I gonna know when I feel it? Yeah, yeah. This is scary, man. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm touching something warm. This is the weirdest. This reminds me of a game my uncle made me. No, I can't say that. Ah! It's out the back. Look, it's coming. Oh, it's quick. Not really. Okay. Whoa! Oh. Dude, she's pissed. Is it venomous? Slight, no, I'm just Slightly. No, no, no. She is a bit squirmy. Yeah, she's trying to get me, man. Yes, yes, she will bite you. And she eats eggs? She does. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, no! Whoa! See that black mamba? Yeah, man. It's like a, it's almost like a black mamba. It's on. Uh, I don't know, man. This, this uh, black mambas are pretty fast. Don't, don't make. I'm talking about the mamba. Don't disrespect. Kobe like that, all right? I hardly ever show off Jean the Woma Python. She is absolutely an amazing animal ambassador. There's actually two different species in the Aspidites genus. There's the Woma Python and of course the Black-Headed Python. These are actually Aspidites ramsii, whereas the Black-Headed Pythons are Aspidites melanolucus. Regardless, the only difference is a little bit different color in the actual patterning. And then of course the Black-Headed Python has that black head. The one thing I will say, at least in my experience, is that the fact that Woma Pythons are typically much, much more mellow than black-headed pythons. Not from a mean standpoint, but black-headed pythons seem to be really food-driven. Womas are usually pretty good. I mean, they're every one that we have, and we have about 10 of them, are all super, super docile and super nice to work with. And both the black-headed and the Womas are actually endemic to Australia only. It's the only place where you can actually find them, which is pretty cool. These guys will get, you know, maybe six to seven foot, whereas the blackheads could maybe get up to 10 foot long, but it's just such an amazing snake. And when we first bought our first pair, we actually got them from a guy named Don Hamper, which was one of the only guys that was producing and Wilma pythons in the entire country and we paid $15,000 for them. I remember that day. It was such a different, I mean, it was like crazy. I was so excited because I had loved Wilmas and black-headed pythons my whole life and to actually own them was incredible. Now, obviously, they've gotten pretty affordable even though not tons of people are producing them. If you ever get a chance to work with Wilma pythons, trust me, you will not be disappointed. They are absolutely wonderful. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor right over here. You know, I got a couple cool video in this playlist I think you guys will really enjoy. You can also subscribe to this channel if you don't mind it would mean the world to me have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you in the next one